what is good you guys we are back with another installment of a day on the hardwood and about five seconds left um uh, talking about the utah jazz the los angeles clippers game and the bucks nets game um they were both good games in two completely different ways but like this one was way more high scoring and the nets and bucks didn't even i don't think it even eclipsed 90 points um, that game was a struggle to watch, but also entertaining at the same time. It was a bad, good game. Like, it was bad basketball at some points, but it was close. So, it was a good game, and it was entertaining at the end. Let's talk about this Bucks nets game first. Giannis and Chris Middleton come out firing against the Nets, and the Nets only score 11 points in the first quarter, but they come back strong in the second quarter to only be down by three at halftime. Bruce Brown was insane in the second quarter, man. Floaters over Brook Lopez, drop coverage problem once again. Although they did win this game, there's a lot of coaching, just terrible coaching moments by Michael Budenholzer, although they did end up winning. Um, the drop coverage was just terrible, and they probably wouldn't have even been in the game if you didn't let Bruce Brown score like 10 points off of floaters in that second quarter. Um, Kevin Durant was struggling mightily in the first half, 2 of 11, and Kyrie wasn't doing great. So it was insane to see them only down uh, 3 with Joe Harris shooting bad, Kevin Durant and Kyrie shooting bad in the first half. But they were doing it, and it was a lot to do with Bruce Brown and his energy on the defensive and offensive end. Um... Let's talk about some other people from this team. Mike James didn't play very well today. Blake Griffin was in foul trouble and all of that. That's why I'm saying this Nets team was scary. All this turmoil, all this bad stuff happening. They're only down three. But let's get into what happened in the second half. Um, man, Giannis and Middleton kept playing good. Um, but nobody else really came to play. I think the third most points on their team besides him and Middleton was Drew Holiday with nine points. And then dropped down to four and two points. And there are a lot of people that were scoreless. They were doing all of the scoring in this game, 30 and 33, I think, for the both of them. And, bro, um, although Giannis did play well, he has to shoot better from the free throw line. And he has to shoot it quicker. Like, I never thought I'd say that. Like, they give him 13, 14 seconds. I think he goes over 10 seconds every time because if that what he did was 13, 14 seconds, then he was he's about 11 to 10 seconds most of the time, and they just let him go most of the time. But it was just too 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 long, and probably a Nets player on the line said, "Bro, it's been like 12 12,000 hours, and he's still doing this dribbling stuff." It's like, bro, shoot it, dude. You're just thinking about it more, and it probably makes him shoot worse, in my opinion. Um. But yeah, Drew Holiday has to play better. I saw a tweet comparing him and Eric Bledsoe's stats together, and Eric Bledsoe's playoff stats was better than his, and that cannot be the case. That is the reason why they have him to be a difference maker that Eric Bledsoe was not. And if his stats are better than you, playoff Eric Bledsoe is a different breed of trash. So if his stats are better than yours, you have to start doing something different. I really thought Drew Holiday was going to be an X Factor in the series, but all, not only is he is he been bad on offense, it just seems like every time he's on Kyrie. Katie, he getting cooked, it, which everybody's getting cooked, but like he got spun. Like Kyrie did some insane move on him. That that move was different. I forgot. I think it was in the third quarter, but that was different. Kyrie, he played okay today. Um, he was. I feel like he was taking a lot of early shots in the in the shot clock, but he's Kyrie Irving. I'm not gonna really doubt him. He's gonna start shooting perfectly fine. And with those type of players, when they shoot bad, I'm not really worried about it because they're gonna come back and they're gonna shoot perfectly fine because Kyrie is that good. KD in the third quarter, bro. Oh my goodness. Well, some crazy shots. Insane thing in the fourth quarter. He finished with 30 points. Almost hit that last shot, but. What I really want to talk about is, although Bruce Brown did have a great game, it was all overshadowed by what he did in those last two possessions. Getting that pick and roll and shooting that floater, you look at yourself and you're like, eh, he's made a lot of those today, but that's his second to last possession in the game, and it should not be going to Bruce Brown. I'm sorry, bro. I, I don't care really how good of a game you're having. That can't be a Bruce Brown shot, even though that's the shot he's been hanging all game. It's a it's a tough it's a tough thing because you want your role players to be confident, right? And you want them to shoot the shots that they're comfortable shooting, and that's the most comfortable shot he shot all game. That's what's got him like ninety percent of his points today. And then we're kind of mad at him for shooting the shot because he's not Kevin Durant. So it, it's a really tough spot to be in as a role player. I wouldn't want to be in that spot, but. 
it is what it is. And then what really got people mad is what he did on the last possession. So the ball like gets to the sideline and Kyrie kind of saves it. Throws it to Bruce Brown. Bruce Brown kind of thinks he has an open lane. Drives and like just throws a layup off the backboard. And it's like, yeah, that shot should be going to Kevin Durant. And then Kevin Durant has to throw up this E from almost half court with only two seconds left after fouling Chris Middleton. And the game is over. And all that good that Bruce Brown did that entire game is just gone. It's washed. It's done. All people are thinking about is him thinking he was the guy and looking like he just wanted to go for the win. And that's just not who Bruce Brown is. Although he did have a great game, that's a tough way to end, and that's what everybody's going to remember. So I feel bad for you, Bruce. I ain't going to lie to you. But let's talk about how they the Bucks can how I think the Bucks won't be able to replicate this because the 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 Nets played one of their worst games of the season. Joe, Joe Harris was terrible. Everybody's talking about Bruce Brown. Joe Harris was horrible. One of seven, um, one of seven for three, and one for ten from the um from the field, bro. Oh my goodness. He was missing wide open mid-range, not even three. A, a lot of people are talking about Bruce Brown. Joe Harris had a horrible game. But he didn't make a, a bonehead, and not really bonehead, but like a big mistake at the end of the game, so nobody's really talking about it. But he had a way worse game than Bruce Brown. Bruce Brown probably had one of the best games on the team, but nobody's going to remember that. That is very, very tough. I still think his Nets at five because that was the worst game they could have played and only lost by three. And Chris Middleton and Giannis went insane, and who knows if they can replicate that. But let's get to the Portland-Los Angeles Clippers game. And man, did Donovan Mitchell come out. Bro, he was insane in the first half, bro. He was insane. He didn't do great in the second half, but he was insane in the first half. Seemed like he couldn't miss the step back he was going. He was getting to the bucket. Seemed like every time PG was on him, he was torturing him. Yeah, man. Yeah, the the series is not looking good, but I just can't seem to forget that my Mavs were up 2-0. Up 2-0 against them. So, I. I'm not going to say anything yet because it happened to my team, so I can't really forget that. Although, although it was kind of different because we won on the road, and that's, it, it may be different circumstances, but it seems like it's kind of the same thing. They're shooting decently, but the other team is just on something different. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and Donovan Mitchell and Luka Doncic, they're, they're both were on something different. And all and the role players are coming to play at the right times. And that's exactly what was happening with the Dallas Mavericks. I'm not sure if they can keep that up. But Donovan Mitchell obviously has better role players than Luka Doncic. So it's way more likely. But I'm just saying, man. I, I just seen this, bro. I just seen them up to all everybody cooking on, on Twitter. I just seen this a couple weeks ago. And I was a part of it. And I was eating it all up. I'm not gonna fall for it again. They're gonna have to win Game Three for for me to for me to believe it and just say, yeah, the Clippers, the Clippers. But they had a lot of just not thinking moments, like Paul George throwing the ball behind his back, giving Joe Joe Ingles a a walk in three. Like it's nothing. It's just too many lackadaisical plays, and that's the thing about the Los Angeles Clippers. They're lackadaisical. They're too cool. PG, too cool. Kawhi don't like to talk. He's too cool. You know what I'm saying? Reggie Jackson, too cool. They all too cool. Besides, like, Patrick Beverly, he loud. Da, 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 all them, they loud. But, like, the, the 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 difference makers, the ones that are taking all these shots and stuff, they just too cool for school, it seems like, most of the time. And I think that may be the problem with them. Paul George, obviously going to get cooked on Twitter, but was driving and penetrating very, very well. Um, in the second half and getting to the line didn't shoot well, but I still think he had an okay game. He didn't have a terrible game, just didn't shoot very well. And he was also getting cooked on defensive end by Donovan Mitchell, and Joe Ingles hit that dagger in his face. Um, but not a terrible game from him. Kawhi has to be more aggressive, like I was saying with Luka. Um, last series, he's got to be more aggressive coming out of stretch, bro. Stop passing the ball to Marcus Morris or PG. Like I said, he did. PG did have a decent game, but you that guy, bro. I just seen you drop 45 and look like you couldn't miss against the Mavs. Maybe it's not just because the Mavs have bad defense. I'm not sure, but I'm just saying. I just saw that. But shout out to Bogey for playing great, great defense on him at the end of that game. And shout out to Reggie Jackson for being that second option, man. Bobby Smurda going crazy. I ain't going to lie to you. But that's all I got for you guys today, man. Jazz up 2-0. Um, what was the other series? Nets up 2-1, you know what I'm saying? But we got the Hawks and Sixers and Suns and Nuggets tomorrow. I'll be back for another post-game recap tomorrow. But if you like this type of content, like us up on the video if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time.